and our number one moment for 25 years of sports cover was Australia being propelled into the 2006 World Cup off the boot of John Aloisi, and he's here tonight. Welcome, John. There you go. You can go there in the middle if you like, John. Thanks a lot. Hey, uh, I just had a look at you looking at yourself on the screen and all, and you've probably looked at it plenty of times over the last five years, but still enjoy looking at it every time it comes up? Actually embarrassed taking off my top now, so uh, <laughs> if I knew I was going to do that, I would have worked on my body a little bit more. <laughs> well, that's one of the first questions. Where, what happened to the top? Have you still got it, or did you throw it in the creek? No, or? I've still got it. Um, I actually did change it with... Uh, a guy who I played with in Spain, he was playing for Uruguay that night, but um, I realised what I did after the game and I got it back off him quickly, so I've still got it. Uh, it should be um, donated to the National Sports Museum <laughs> here at the MCG. It'd be a fantastic addition to their rich uh, um, collection. Now, what about that? Uh, what goes through a person's mind when they're standing in there with the ball and they can put it into the net and put Australia in the World Cup for the first time in 32 years? Just tell us what was going through your mind, John Aloisi. Luckily, not a lot, because <laughs> <laughs> I think if I was uh, thinking about it too much, I would have uh, felt the pressure. But um, it was uh, a funny feeling because I had always dreamt of, as a kid, that I was going to play in the World Cup. and. Uh, through my playing days as a junior, um, I always used to say that I was going to play and score a goal at a World Cup, and uh, we always seemed to miss out. So to believe that as a kid, I, I don't know why, but um, I, I felt it was going to happen. And when it was my turn to step up, I was going, this is it. You're going to send Australia to the World Cup. Just you know, do what you've been doing in training, because I've been practicing penalties for 15 odd years, and uh, went down to that moment. And, I knew that it was going to go in. Right. Now, you mightn't have been thinking much at that stage when you kicked it, but what about when an earlier one, like when Mark Viduke has missed, what were you thinking about at that stage? Well, we did practice penalties the day before and Mark Viduke took one and he missed exactly the same as he did the day before too. So. Oh, well, you play as you practice. <laughs> <laughs> so we were a little bit nervous when, once he missed that, but um, when Swartz has saved yeah. the next one... You know the confidence uh, was straight back. Uh, you know we knew that we we're going to win it because Swartzel was amazing that night. Well, he stopped two, didn't he, in the, during the, the penalty shootout? Yeah, well, I don't think a lot of people know this, but um, just before the end of the game, um, because we practiced penalties, like I said, the day before, Swartzel uh, was practicing with uh, Kalats, our second choice keeper, and he was saving more Kalats. So mm -hmm. Hiddink was thinking about putting Kalats in, and he warmed him up. Um, but Emerton ended up uh, getting cramped uh, five minutes to go, so he had to change him, and that was our last sub. So it could have been completely different. It could have been Kalats in goals instead of Swartzer. Mm, OK, all right. And uh, anyway, Mark was there, and what a fantastic performance it was. Now, when it did go in, and you, you, well, you weren't thinking much, you said, but it went in, you knew you were going to kick it. Uh, that was obviously just an entirely instinctive, spontaneous reaction when you just took off and ripped the, the, the shirt off and all that sort of stuff. You know, you didn't think about going and embracing your teammates, you just gave them the flick and off you went. <laughs> no, where we ended up running to was where our families were. We knew exactly where our families were sitting, so that's why the 200 metre run uh, down the other side of the pitch, it wasn't that, uh, you know, I was running away from my teammates, it was just to get there and celebrate with the families. The taking off the shirt, I think that was just years of, uh, you know, that... I remember back here in 97 against Iran, I think uh, if anyone watched that night, they will remember the, the heartache, you know, being 2-0 mm. up and ended up uh, drawing the game 2-2 in the last 15 minutes, getting knocked out. I was, you know, involved in that squad and then the, the next one against Uruguay and, and I had to cop a lot of shit for four years from my Uruguayan teammates in Spain, so to, uh, to send Australia to the World Cup and kick them out, I was more than happy. Yeah, and now... Uh, over your career that's spent like, uh, a bit of Bruce here, 438 games, 118 goals. That's clearly the, the best, the most memorable. Is any goal of your 118 any better than that? Um, the goal against Japan at the World Cup was uh, probably just as good for me um, because it was at the World Cup and mm. it was uh, in open play, so no one can ever say that I'm just the penalty king. They can say that I can also Absolutely. score goals. <laughs> and, 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 and the World Cup. So you, you, you've qualified, you've got there and stuff, so then that's the relief of qualifying. Just tell us about the build-up and then playing in the World Cup. Well, that was the, the highlight of my career, was the whole month uh, of the World Cup. Um, 
you know, the lead up to it, we trained um, in Holland and, you know, we'll, it was just something that uh, you'd been dreaming about, um, getting prepared for a World Cup game and, um, you know, our focus was on the Japan game and then um, I remember leading up to that week we ended up going to a hotel in Germany and we had uh, about five to 10,000 supporters, uh, Australian supporters watching our training session and uh, never experienced something like that before. Um, so our World Cup final was that first game against Japan and mm. it was amazing. The Aussies uh, really showed that uh, we are the home, home team over in Germany even though we are playing away from home. The support there was incredible. If you talk to any Aussie supporter, they'll say it's probably the best uh, experience they've had of their life. Mm -hmm. And um, now these days, you're uh, coaching with Melbourne Heart. You've got a youth squad there. Yeah, got a youth team. Um, also helping out with the first team as one of the assistants and uh, enjoying that. You know, I couldn't run anymore, so I had to find something else to do and uh, coaching is the next best thing. So now these young boys you've got in the squad there, are you teaching them if they get a just a minor nick, you know, you know, glancing blow that they don't go to ground as if they've been shot. Because <laughs> this was a feature of the World Cup in sides you played against, wasn't it? There were blokes that just, there was some Academy Award stuff going on all the time. It is sad, it's not in um, our culture to do that, no. but you have to understand uh, where some of these uh, players are coming from. You know, the South Americans, um, they come from absolute slum and to get out of where they're living, they'll do anything to win. and. We experienced it against Uruguay um, because that's all they've got, and so mm. they, they don't care if they get called a cheat, or, you know, or someone that dives, or you know, they even um, you know will pinch you or do other things. I won't repeat to you during a game. You just have to put up with it because uh, they'll do anything to win. But yeah. we're not like that. The Italians are the worst, aren't they? Worst at diving, yeah. yeah. They're, but um, that's because they're, they're good at uh, theatre or they're good actors, so <laughs> that's probably why they're good divers. It's part of this tradition that's yeah. been going for years in, in theatre and in sport. Yeah. So, um, uh, now you've got the young kids looking over here. Yeah. After. Any involved with the Australian team anymore? No, no involvement at all. I, I'll follow them as a keen supporter and hopefully get to next World Cup and watch them play. All right. How are we, gonna, how are we going on the... On the the world scene? Well, uh, good. We've, um, since last World Cup, we've had a uh, change of coach. Um, in the Asian Cup, we ended up finishing second. Uh, Japan ended up winning. Um, and then we've had some good friendly games. We beat Germany over in Germany. Mm -hmm. After the 4-0 uh, thrashing uh, at last World Cup, I think it was important to, to get that out of the way. And uh, now, hopefully, we'll qualify again and do even better next time. And there's going to be a, there's a turnover now, because there's a lot of blokes like you that played for a long time and all, but they're all moving on now, isn't it? Yeah, moving on. Uh, Mark Schwartz will probably won't move on, though. I think he might still make it to the next World Cup. <laughs> he's, he's that fit and uh, such a good pro. You know, you never know. He might be 40 and still playing in the next World Cup, but a lot of the other players have moved on, and we've got some good younger players coming through. Okay. Well, you have been, uh, from our committee, uh, been voted as participating in the number one sporting moment of the last 25 years, the, the time that sports cover's been in action. Uh, got a favourite sporting memory of your own, outside of your own sport, over the last 25 years? Look, I have to say, all those moments there, yeah. I remember watching most of them. Um, uh, the Shane Warne uh, the game when they played South Africa, I was watching that in my living room back in Adelaide. Um, I think I was the only one up at that stage and I was jumping around the... Yeah. You know, I, I love sport and I follow most sports and I just enjoy a, a good game of whatever it is and enjoy good moments. Mm. So you can, probably those 25 moments are more 25 of my best too. <laughs> <laughs> well said. And uh, having uh, got the number one ranking, Peter Nash, now apart from getting the traditional bottle of wine that I've been handing out uh, on behalf of Sports Cover, there's actually Thank been you. a trophy struck. This is outstanding, and uh, Peter Nash is here to present the trophy to you, John. Thanks. So welcome Peter back. Oh, look at this. Thank you very much. Got the sports cover sign in the background there, Sparksy, have you? 